Hey guys, in this video, at last, I am checking out the Laowa 9mm 0D lens for Sony APS-C. Uh, really excited about this thing. Uh, before I get into this review, I did want to mention, you guys may have already heard that Sony announced the A6400 yesterday. Um, some exciting news, some not so exciting news. I'm planning on making another video discussing that. If you guys have any questions, specific questions about that camera, related to that camera, whatever it is, you can post those down below. I'll read through the comments and try to answer as many of those questions in that upcoming video. So let's jump into this review. Let's take a look at how this lens comes packaged. And this is the box that the lens comes in. It is tiny. I don't know if you guys can tell. It fits in the palm of your hand. This is what it looks like on the front. It just says Compact Dreamer 0D, C and D Dreamer 9mm f2.8, and then the Laowa logo in the corner. Um, very simple packaging. Um, you got some QR codes, and then another image on this side. It is plastic wrapped, so that is nice. So you just pop it open like that. A warranty card with a serial number that's hand printed. Um, looks like an instruction manual and then the lens itself is this vacuum sealed that's it for the packaging very nice foam padding in the box there and indeed this thing is vacuum sealed so very nice packaging I like that a lot all right, and here is the lens. First impressions, it is smaller than expected and also lighter than expected. Little plastic E-mount cap on the back. There is the back of the lens, uh, metal mount, no electronic connections. This is a manual lens. Around the front, you have the Laowa logo on a plastic lens cap. You take this uh, lens hood. Let me talk about this. This is a metal lens hood. Uh, nice, has some ridges on the inside. Nice piece of aluminum or, or steel, not sure. There is a blue accent ring around the front of this thing that looks very cool. So let's take a look at the front. Laowa branding. You have the Sea Dreamer 9mm f2.8, 49mm filter thread, and then a serial number right there. The front lens element is convex, as you can see right there. And on the side, you have some markings. So towards the back, uh, you have an aperture. So f2.8 to f22. And there's a little uh, mark on the top of the 22. I'm not sure what that's for. The aperture does have distinct clicks, although they are very quiet. But I do like the fact that it has clicks. And here is the focus. So infinity, nice and stiff. And the minimum focusing distance is here, 0.12, guessing of a meter, and then 0.4 of a foot, half a foot. Um, so not a whole ton of uh, rotation here, a little bit less than um, 180 as far as rotation from one end to the next. So that is the lens, just surprised at how light it is and how compact it is. I was expecting it to be bulkier than this. Um, but very excited to mount this on the camera and see what the images look like. So let's do that next. Here is the lens mounted on my a6000 and it is a very well suited lens for this camera body. I like the blue accent ring, especially with the lens hood off. I think it just looks really nice. Um, the lens is lightweight. It's relatively compact. In fact, if you compare it to something like the Sigma 16, it is quite a lot smaller and also a lot lighter than that setup. The one thing that I did notice with this is that the lens hood does not click into place as is typical. It kind of just sits there. There's no click so that you know that it's in the final position. Um, and so because there's no click, it also moves a little bit too easy for my taste, but just a small gripe that I noticed with it. All right, so let's get on to the important bit, and that is sample photos and videos. These were all done on my A6500 and all done handheld. Um, so here we go.
All right, so that is it for the sample photos and videos. Overall, I am very impressed with the image quality and just how wide and amazing the shots look with this thing. Now, I'll be honest with you guys, when I first got the lens and I did the unboxing video, I wasn't really impressed with it because I think that it is a pricey lens for what it is. It's, after all, a manual focus prime lens. Um, yes, it's super wide, but I don't think that the build quality justifies a $500 price tag. Um, now, I think that it's around $450 now. You guys can check the link down below to, to see what the current price is on it. After using this lens over the last couple of weeks, I've realized that what you're getting for your money is not necessarily tank-like construction. Even though the lens is all made out of metal, it still feels not cheap, but it doesn't feel super expensive. Um, for comparison's sake, I just recently unboxed and am testing this lens from Viltrox, which is an 85 millimeter prime. And this thing is built like a tank. It feels a lot more expensive than it is. Whereas this lens just feels a little bit cheaper than it is. But if you guys end up purchasing this lens and start using it, I have a feeling that you will forgive that tiny fault um, because the image quality is stellar. Just to give you guys an idea of how wide this nine millimeter lens is, this is a shot done with the Sigma 16 millimeter on my Sony a6500. So 16 millimeters on an APS-C sensor. This is what you get. And this is what you get with the Laowa nine millimeter. So a lot wider frame. This room looks a whole lot bigger at nine millimeters when you compare it to the 16 millimeter shot. So this lens is really wide. My wife and I are both real estate agents, so we were able to take this lens with us when we were out touring a bunch of different homes. And uh, I felt when I was recording those videos and taking those shots, like I was recording for an episode of House Hunters. I mean, it's typical of what you'd see on HGTV. Super wide, it makes the rooms look amazing. This lens is not only super wide, but it's also very sharp. It's also decent in low light at f2.8. It's not going to be super amazing like an f1.8 lens, but f2.8 is not bad. And it's certainly better than the Sony 10 to 18, which is f4. Now let's talk about sharpness. The one thing that I noticed with this lens is that it's very easy to focus because it's super wide, you are able to nail focus very quickly in the center. Even wide open at f2.8, the corners are sharp. They're not as sharp as the center of the frame, but they are more than adequate for a manual lens. Now, if you shoot at f2.8 or f4, the corners will have some chromatic aberration, as you can see here. Pretty common with any sort of lens, really even the best of the Sigmas have a little bit of chromatic aberration slightly less than what you're seeing here. However, when you stop the lens down to about 5.6 to f8, the chromatic aberration seems to almost disappear. This lens is approaching on Rokinon levels of refinement as far as a very flat, well-focused focal plane. Now let's talk a little bit about distortion. This lens is called the Zero D for a reason. It stands for zero distortion. When I took a shot of this garage door, for example, you can see just how straight the lines are on the top and the bottom. The image is nice and sharp, but there's very little of that barrel distortion bubble effect in this image. The images are nice and flat. There's almost no correction whatsoever that you need to apply to these images straight out of the camera. In fact, all of the sample photos, all the sample videos that I took with this thing and my a6500 were straight out of the camera, no post-processing or editing. The one thing that I will mention to you because some of you may have noticed it in the samples is that there is a little bit of vignetting. I expected that with this lens because nine millimeters is very, very wide for an APS-C sensor. And I found that in a couple of the shots, one corner was slightly darker than some of the others. And the reason for that was this lens hood. And I mentioned that before, it doesn't really click into place. And so what ended up happening is while I was using this lens, because the focus ring is right in front, it is very easy to accidentally grip and slightly rotate this lens hood, the corner of that lens hood gets in your shot. This thing is super wide. You have to be careful with your fingers even to make sure that they are not in the shot. The third and last small complaint I have about this lens has to do with flaring. 
I did notice when taking my sample photos that if you are shooting directly into sunlight or into a sunset, there is quite heavy and noticeable flaring on the edges and corners of your frame. So something to be aware of. It's certainly not a deal breaker for most, especially if you're using this lens indoors, but expect some flaring and this is even with the lens hood on. Other than that, this thing is amazing, highly recommended. I think it most closely competes with the Rokinon 12mm f2, which is a manual focus prime lens from Rokinon, but 9mm is a whole lot wider than 12. Do I like it more than the Sony 10 to 18? Absolutely. Um, the Sony 10 to 18 has autofocus and stabilization, which this thing does not have, but this Lawa is also almost half the price. It's also faster at f2.8, and it's wider at nine millimeters. Um, I know that one millimeter difference doesn't seem like much, but every millimeter matters when you're talking about wide angle lenses or ultra wide angle lenses. It's a pricey lens, so when I purchased it initially, I wasn't planning on keeping it long term, but after using it, um, I can't see myself ever selling it. Um, it fits in with my collection because the Sigma 16 millimeter, while also a wide angle lens, is really not wide enough for real estate photography, which my wife and I need a good real estate photography lens. Um, and that Sigma 16 is great for gimbal shots. It has autofocus, you can stick it on a camera and gimbal work. Um, whereas this thing is just a great photo lens um, for those times where you need to be as wide as possible. Anyway, so that is it for this thing. Uh, again, links to Amazon will be down below, so check those out. Um, and again, just a reminder, if you guys have questions about the A6400 announcement from yesterday, um, or ideas for a video topic, conversational kind of video, post that down below. Um, I'll be reviewing that here in the next couple of days. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for all of your likes, comments, and support. Stay tuned for more, and have a nice day. Bye-bye.